Hello! Uh, this is going to be a quick video. I'm just going to prep you for the next video, talking about something, a concept, uh, something that I do quite often, and people ask me how I do it. And that's sending text messages to my phone from my computer, which is actually easier than you think. Now, obviously, you can buy devices that actually connect to cellular, uh, you know, um, towers and you have an account and you can send messages and that's a very efficient way to do it but there is a quick and dirty cheap way free way to do it uh, that works with most carriers I have an example here of just a few uh, main carriers and that is to send a text through email and it's very simple if you can send an email you can send a text to most phones the thing you need to know is what the phone number is and who their provider is. That's one of the benefits of having a device that can send text, such as a phone, um, which maybe I should do a tutorial on sending a text from your computer through your phone some other time. Um, but sending it from your computer through email, you need to know who their provider is. For example, if they're T-Mobile, you have to know that they're T-Mobile because you have to give it at tmomail.net. So the way this works is you have their 10 digit phone number you put their 10 digit phone number no space or anything just the numbers at and then whatever the ending is here and this is just a few examples if you google email to sms or email to text you can get fuller lists this is just a quick one i grab um so if they're on all tells all tell still a thing uh let's say at&t you'll do their phone number again only no num numbers the full 10 numbers no spaces at txt.att.net and there's also uh, some of these providers allow not just SMS but MMS and the ending might be the same might be different I don't even bother with that uh, if I need to send a picture or something I usually just send a link I'm not going to try to attach an image this way it just seems like it'd be a pain in the butt sending images through regular text can be a pain in the butt still in 2018 uh, for example if they were with Verizon it'd be their phone number at vtex.com uh, I am I use Google Fi uh, and I don't have it on the list here I believe it's your number at fi fi dot google dot com I believe is what it is there's something along those lines uh, and I'll actually look at that in the next video because I send messages to my phone all the time drawbacks of this is you have to know what carrier they are on where again if you have a cell phone or some sort of cellular device that you can send text messages to you just need to know the phone number and the cell company figures that all out somehow I guess because um, it's saying it's a number where this is you're basically sending an email to in this case AT&T's email server and then they're forwarding it to the phone as a text and it comes through as a text um, another thing is uh, I and you know give me a hard time about this it's one of the few proprietary applications that I I have in my life that I feel uh, I can't find any alternative to and there's I know there's other ones out there that they really don't have the functionality this is hangouts Google hangouts is what I use for my texting it allows me to text not only from my phone but from my computer and tablet all at the same time and not just chat with other people on hangouts but send actual text and my texts come into there which is nice because they pop up at, on my desktop as messages and then I can respond from there uh, but when I send myself a text this way where I put in my phone number at fi.google.com or whatever it is, it actually comes it comes to my phone, but not through Google Hangouts. It goes straight to the default um, text message application on my phone. So that's the only time I ever use that application is when a when I send myself a text this way. And in that case, it doesn't go to uh, my other devices. It only goes to my phone. Um, but in most people, that's not going to be an issue. It's going to go to whatever application they use. Uh, in most cases so the biggest drawback is you have to know the person's uh, carrier and the extension for that um, but that's pretty much it so example if you were to email let's say my number was five 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 and I use Verizon it would be at vtext.com I would send a text that and you can do it from Gmail uh, Yahoo uh, hotmail I'm just saying email clients uh, but if you have your own server you can send text that way uh, setting up your own mail server uh, is commonly frowned upon because there's lots of problems trust me uh, I've been through those headaches uh, but even if you use an another mail service if you have a web server and your own domain you can send emails from your server a lot of email clients will block them in many cases if your server isn't well known it'll put them as spam um, but I haven't really had that issue with this these uh, these techniques these uh, email with these addresses at least for me uh, 
seem to go through. Although if someone starts abusing it, maybe they will be blocked. But uh, you should be able to set it on your system to not be blocked, I guess. But this is very, very useful to have automated scripts text you. I, this is how my doorbell works. I have an ESP8266 chip hooked to my doorbell. It sends an HTTP request to my desktop, which hits, sends an HTTP request to my web server, and my web server sends an email to both my phone and my wife's phone uh, using our phone numbers and our Google Fi address. But it's sending it as an email, but it comes in as a text. Very useful. Uh, and in the next video, I'm going to go over this a little more in detail, uh, talking, I'll show you a quick script on uh, sending emails from your web server, which may vary depending on your setup, but it's just going to be a basic idea, concept, and how this is very useful. Um, it's also very useful I have when a user logs into my computer, I automatically get a text. So I know when my servers are being accessed, if someone accesses my server, I get an email notification uh, along with their IP address uh, it's in the time they were logged in, which automatically is attached You know, when you get a text at the time. So it, it can be very useful. Uh, and again, it's it and on average, and I do this often, it takes anywhere from five to 10 seconds for from the message being sent to it getting to your phone. So it's not instantaneous, but it's good enough for everything I do. So I hope you watch the next video where I go into this a little more on detail on how it could be used. So I thank you for watching. Please visit filmsbychris.com. That's Chris with a K. There's a link in the description as well as a link to my Patreon account. Think about supporting me. I appreciate it, and I hope that you have a great day.